Now that we finished this assembly, we're going to go ahead and take our authentic aero service parts. Here we have our 637-119-44-C, which is our PTFD service kit, as well as our 637-118-C air section service kit. We'll start with our air section kit. I'm going to go ahead and go in reverse order. I'm going to start with assembly of the major valve and then move to assembly of the pilot valve. You want to always make sure that you have your operator's manual. We're going to go ahead and open to the air section of the pump and follow the exploded view. I'm going to keep that right here next to me. Now you want to make sure that you go ahead, I'm going to place the center body like this with, actually I'm going to flip it around. We're going to have the front facing me and the back facing the camera there. We're going to start with our piston. going to open our service kit and I'm looking for my U cup here. Each service kit does come with a 93706-1 T lube grease packet. You're going to want to make sure that you lube your seals within the air motor according to your operator's manual. more on there. Better to have too much lube, grease, key lube grease, than too little. Okay, we got that on there. Now we're going to go ahead and feed this around the piston. There we go. There we go. Now this is key. You want to make sure that you follow your operator's manual. The operator's manual will tell you in what orientation to have the lips of your U-cup facing. In this case, with the center body position this way, we want the lips facing outward or facing me. Gently place the piston and your bore, remember this bore is slightly smaller than the bore on the other side, so the piston technically only fits in one way. From there we're going to move to our gasket here. You can see that we have two gaskets and they're very similar. You want to make sure that you use the proper gasket according to the operator's manual. You can see here, this is your pilot valve port where the pilot valve sends an air signal to the top of the piston. I'm going to pop that out just to show you something real quick. The piston and the spool, when put together, creates an unbalanced spool valve, which was designed to prevent the pump from stalling. Let's set that back aside. Set this in. Remember, lips facing out. Now we can see here we have the proper gasket with the cutout there, the notch cutout to align with your pilot valve port. Okay, put a little grease on it there. Both sides. Place that on there. From there, we're going to go ahead and move to our leg on this particular model, which is the plate cover, the cover plate. We can take our four bolts here. When we look at the operator's manual, 
we want to make sure that we look for all the proper uh, lubrication requirements. Let's see here. In this case, it does not tell us we need to apply anisees. So we'll go ahead and I'm just going to start this, get it threaded. I'm not going to torque these right now. I'm just going to get them snug to hold our piston into place. There we go. I'm going to turn this this way. I'm going to go back to our operator's manual. And now, if you can see here, we're coming in from the back and feeding behind the 109 piston there. So we're going to start with our 112, 113, 114, 115, and so forth. We want to make sure that we follow the orientation there. You can see the arrow telling you which direction the legs point. Start with the 112 washer, and you can see here that there is a lip here. You want to make sure that that lip is facing up because that will, if you can see here, we have our stack. We will have an O ring in there, which that seal will seal the internal diameter of that O ring, that lip here. It's not the ceiling point, but it that's where it, actually the o-ring seals to the washer there. So set that aside. Go ahead and drop that in. You want to make sure it doesn't spin around. Okay. We'll put our large o-ring on there. Just follow the order of the operator's manual. Put the smaller o-ring here. Now I'm not sure if it necessarily matters or not. I put that in the place there. If we look within our bore, we can see drilled and tapped airway passages. I'm sorry, not drilled and tapped, but drilled airway passages. What I do is I try to keep the legs, if at all possible, on the stack from covering those passages. It, it may not matter, but it's just out of habit. That's what I like to do. Um, and you want to keep the legs parallel with each other. And I mean parallel with each other, lined up with each other when we stack them in there. Just a good habit. It may not make a difference, but... We'll go ahead and do that here. Okay, there we go. Now we're just going to repeat. We're going to take our last item 112 washer, place it on top. We're 113 o-ring it's going to sit in the middle of our 116 here item 116 it's our last 114 o-ring in the place Actually, I think we might have one more. Yes, we do. Flip that around. Pop that in the place. It's going to be a little snug in there. You may have to push it down a bit. Here we go. Now our last 114 O-ring. Okay, now this happens more than you think. So before you apply your plate, 
you want to make sure that you install your spool. This has been left out, as I mentioned again, more than you think. So we're going to put a little grease on there. We want to make sure that we insert it with the holes here facing the piston, the white piston down the other end. Slide that down. We're going to take our last gasket here. Place. Okay, so you can see here that on this particular plate we have our grounding symbol. So I'm going to make sure to keep the grounding lug with that symbol. You can put this plate on either side technically. So we'll go ahead and line this with our gasket. Okay, so that completes the assembly of the major valve. Go to your operator's manual. We are going to look at item, I believe it is 105 here. 105, you can see 105 there are bolts or hardware. has a little hand by it. That hand is key. It's telling me to look at my key and look at my torque spec. So for item 105, it's telling me to torque 40 to 50 inch pounds. So I'm gonna start off with my standard wrench, give them a little snug, not too much, 40 to 50 inch pounds is not, um, is not a whole, whole lot. So we're gonna get those snug a little bit. Turn it around and we're going to do the same to the other side. We're going to take our torque wrench, reading in inch pounds, and we want to go 40 to 50 inch pounds. Okay, let's set about 40. See, it just clicked. That wasn't much. Clicked there. Click. Click. Now I like to do it twice, just out of habit, so I'm going to go around one more time. Click. Click. I'm going to do the same to the yeah. other side. From here, we're going to go ahead and move to our pilot valve assembly. What you want to do is go ahead and grab one of your bushings. Actually, before we do that, well, we can leave that in there. You want to take your bushing for your diaphragm rod. You want to replace the seals around the outside. This particular kit is for uh, multiple air motors. So you're going to see two different sizes here. So we're, you want to make sure that you grab the right O-rings. We'll put that around there. Slide that down into the groove. There we go. That over. Okay. 
There we go. Just put a little bit of lube on there. That should be a decent amount. So we're gonna put that into place. Right down the center there. I have the bushing lined up to where I'm ready to just screw in the two screws here. You can see here that these do come uh, pre loctited I'm going to go ahead and look at my operator's manual to make sure that these do not have any type of torque requirements. So I am right here, item 123 which it does give a square box, but with no identifier key telling me to torque. This box here calls out Loctite 572, which again, as I mentioned, those screws already come with Loctite on them. So I'm gonna take my Allen wrench here. As mentioned, it does not call out a torque spec, so you wanna get them nice and snug nice and tight around, around the outside is a, a a path or a for our uh, snap ring so you want to make sure that you leave that out slightly so you can get your snap ring into place so we'll go ahead and grab our snap ring our pliers we'll put that into place All right, we have that in the place. It's good to slide it around here just to make sure it's all the way in place, and it is. There we go. Push that down, there we go. We're going to take our pilot valve spool. Allen's here. We're just going to use one for now. We're going to pop that on the end. It can be a little tricky due to how slippery these guys are. Just kind of careful not to. There we go. Now that we have the bushing in place, we can put our stack back in. We're going to start with the O ring. It's best to do this one at a time O ring stack, O ring stack, instead of putting it, the stack and O rings together first. You do not want to get them misaligned. So just put your O ring in there and your stack. Stack. O ring. And your last O ring. Now before we install our pilot valve spool, we're going to put in a bushing, just push it down, there we go, line that up, I'll get the two new screws with the Loctite on them, there we go. There we go. Now we can put in our last snap ring. And make sure you get it all the way around. Make sure you get it in the track. We have the O-ring on this end already. 
you want to leave that off until you insert it through the center body and when you get to the other side. Push that through. It might be a little tight at times. There we go. There we go. You can see that there. On the other side. We're going to take our last O-ring here. We're going to insert it there. There we go. Make sure it's in the track. There we go. Now that completes the assembly of the pilot valve and we're ready to move to the assembly of the fluid section. We're going to start with our diaphragm rod and the fluid section kit. We're going to go to the fluid section page of our manual. There we go. Again, you want to make sure that you follow all torque specifications and lubrication specs if needed. Put that right there. Now, if we look at this diaphragm rod as well as the diaphragm nut, we're going to see that there is a torque spec and that there's also a Loctite 271 spec. 271 for this particular model. When you disassemble, before you reassemble, you want to make sure that you clean out any excess Loctite that's been left, that was left over from the disassembly out of the threads within the diaphragm rod and also off your diaphragm nuts. If you do have excess Loctite on there from prior use, it can cause a false torque spec reading. So you want to make sure that you clean those threads thoroughly before you reassemble. <clears throat> so we're going to take our diaphragm nut, our diaphragm washer, or one of our washers here, I'm sorry. You can see on the inside here, there's a beveled edge on one side and not the other. You want to make sure that you put the beveled edge facing up so we can fit our O-ring in there. Oops. Open our kit here. This is PTFE. So we're going to go, the operator's manual tells us item number three, which is Y328-14. In this case, slide that on there. There we go. From that point, we're going to move to our bigger washers here. You can see that these two, in this case, this is a stainless steel model. The air side is constructed of a different material than the fluid side. The fluid side is going to be a stainless steel washer, where the air side is going to be a carbon steel washer. So you want to make sure that you grab the appropriate washer. Again, we're replacing nitro with PTFE, so when you use PTFE diaphragm, you have your PTFE diaphragm with your Sandoprene backer. The diaphragm is indicated with which side is the air side. You can see here that it says air side. So you want to make sure that that side is facing the air cap. We are going to line this up here. Your PTFE is going to be facing the fluid side. <clears throat> you can see here on this plate, one edge is beveled, it's smoother. You want to make sure that edge is facing the diaphragm. That way when it flexes, it doesn't cut the diaphragm. Send that in the place here. There we go. Okay. We're going to take our air side, the, the washer for our air side. 
same concept here. It has a beveled edge on one side. I'm going to make sure that that's facing the diaphragm. Take your o-ring here, slide it around there, your PTFE o-ring. Before we move forward, we're going to, you can see here, we have a seal here to replace. Your seal here out of your fluid section rebuild kit. You can see that it's a nitrile seal due to it being on the air side of the pump and not the fluid. Now this seal can be kind of tricky to come on, so we're going to try to pry that on there. Once you get your o-ring on the diaphragm rod, go ahead and slide it down. There you go, and it fits right in track there. Then go ahead and take, Elbow well, can put that on in a moment here. Take your diaphragm assembly. Take your 271 per the operator's manual. Get a little bit on there. You don't want to overdo it, but you want to make sure you get enough on there. I use this pump for maintenance classes, so I want to be, make sure I can get it apart when I use it again. There we go. Thread that on there. Now we get it nice and tight, but we'll torque it after we assemble the other end. Take your center body, put that through. You want to make sure that the holes on your diaphragms line up with the holes. I had it on, I'm sorry, with the screws, with, with the bolt on the center body. There we go. We're going to go ahead and put the other side on. Give her Sanoprene backer, our PTFE diaphragm. We're going to put those together, line your holes up. Make sure that your air side is facing the air cap. Use your carbon steel washer for the air side. And turn this around. Our stainless steel washer for the fluid side. Again, make sure the beveled edge is facing out so your o ring can fit in the place. Slide that down. Make sure the beveled edge is facing the diaphragm so it doesn't cut it when it flexes. I'm going to push this through. Make sure our holes line up there. The other side, again, make sure the beveled edge is facing the diaphragm. Our last PTFE O ring on there. Apply the Loctite. I'm going to get it around the threads there. There we go. Take your hand here, hold that diaphragm assembly in place, and we're going to line this up. I'm going to make sure that we don't lose. You can see here my thumb is holding that diaphragm uh, washer in place here. You don't want to lose your O-ring or your diaphragm washer. Be careful there. There we go. 
and I can still see it. You want to make sure that our O-ring didn't fall off. Nope. I'll go ahead and start threading that on there. There we go. Now, you can go ahead and take your three quarter inch wrenches and we're gonna tighten these snug before we torque. You're gonna need to keep one. We're gonna check torque specs on our operator's manual. Item, let's see. We're going to look for our diaphragm nut. Item 14 tells us 25 to 30 foot-pounds. So we're going to take our torque wrench, which reads in foot-pounds, and set between 25 and 30. Take our three quarter inch socket. There we go. Now we're going to hold this. This is going to spin, so I'm going to put it against the table there to hold it. Oops, my hands are still a little slippery. Sorry about the fumbling around. Here we go. Okay, actually, I'll just hold it like that if I can. There we go. Flip it around and do the same to the other side. I'm going to do it twice on both sides because I like to get in the habit of doing that. Well, let's move this down so I have a little more leverage. There we go. There we go. From there, we're ready to move to our fluid caps. You can see typically your fluid cap is going to have an arrow on one end. You want to make sure always that your ball sits on top of your seat. So on the bottom side, the balls sit within the fluid cap. So you want to make sure that that end is facing down. Like so. We have our fluid cap on in the right orientation. Now go ahead and grab your hardware that we set aside here. And we're going to thread these on snug and tight for now. For now, we're going to tighten them securely with the socket. You want to make sure that you follow your operator's manual. You can see down here the torque pattern, just like changing a car tire. We start out with one, go to the bottom two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. You know, the, the key there is to get a nice even seal all the way around. Actually, 
add my adapter back on here. Not my adapter, but my extension. Now you don't want to over torque it, so just get them snug. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and put the other side on. Again, make sure the chamber that houses the ball you can see again as mentioned the top does not but the bottom does it's facing the bottom eight there we go now we're ready to torque so go ahead and take your torque wrench remember in inch pounds in this case, it is 120 to 140 inch pounds. So we'll set this between 120 and 140 inch pounds. Oh, see, it doesn't take much. Two. One, eight. I'm just going to do it one more time here. One, seven, eight. Now we're ready for, we're going to put on the bottom manifold first so we can use the fluid cap here to keep our pump, our pump nice and sturdy, the, the flat area there. Now remember, on the bottom, our balls go within the fluid cap. Take your seats here. Both ends here are beveled. On some models, you can use either side. They can be reversed. Put our seat in the place. Cut away from you. Safety first. Put in your PTFE seal. Now the thing about PTFE is it's not like rubber. Once you compress it and you decompress it, you typically can't use it again because it it crushes. And when you decompress it, it doesn't bounce back like rubber. Take our manifold here. You want to make sure that you keep it in the same orientation as you took it apart. So we're going to place that on there. Now, as per the operator's manual, it does tell you to use anises, which we have. We've pre applied it for the video. Bolts have the same, same torque spec as our nuts did. So we'll go ahead and get these snug with our hand all the way down. And we'll go ahead and torque here. Just going to do it one more time here. One. There we go. Three, four. Flip it over. Now we're ready for the top. Take our seats here, put them into place, put your PTFE O rings in place there. Let's see. And make sure that you get these in the best you can. You don't want to cut them when you put your manifold on. Go ahead and put your PTFE balls in the place. Take your top manifold. Put it in the same orientation in which you disassembled it. There we 
go. One, four. We need all sides there. We'll do it one more time. One, that completes the assembly of an arrow one inch metallic pro series diaphragm pump. Thank you and have a great day.